of Nevada, the great silver state and the gold. New tales of Nevada, the stories, people working hard to make a home. Old tales of Nevada. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Old Tales of Nevada, past and present. Glad to have you with us this week. We have a special edition in store with a special guest. We'll tell you all about it right after this. Hi there. Heroy Marshall here to welcome you to our new world-famous Marshall Mint at the Reno Town Mall. You'll find gold and silver bars, the v and Railroad, Wild Mustangs, and Angels of the Day medallions. One of a kind of state jewelry, Morgan Dollars, Fashion Golden Quartz Jewelry, and see the Free Museum with precious stones and crystals from all over the world. The Marshall Mint, now open in Reno at the Reno Town Mall. Boutique Elegante's Winter Super Sale is on now. Get 30 to 50% off all winter fashions. Sizes up to 4X. Shop while the selection is great. That and so much more at Boutique Elegante. Lakeside Court in Reno. Boutique Elegante's Winter Super Sale is on now. Get 30 to 50% off all winter fashions. Sizes up to 4X. Shop while the selection is great. That and so much more at Boutique Elegante. Lakeside Court in Reno. Welcome everybody to Old Tales in Nevada. I'm John O'Brien, the host of the show, and with me as usual, our executive producer, you, Roy Marshall. I got it. Now there's a title for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you betcha. It's almost, almost like Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. It's good to have you with us back together again. Yeah, well. Uh, getting closer and closer to our 300th show, and uh, as we plan for our shows uh, towards the 300th show, uh, we have uh, tried to make it special every week, and you we have a good a friend. You got to plan for a party. Too. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah you give yeah. us a date, yeah. we'll yeah. have yeah. it okay. for sure. But we have a very special friend with us yeah. today. Yeah. He's been on a show a Dr. couple of times James with us, James and uh, a world-renowned cancer doctor mm -hmm. that comes on Old Tales in Nevada and is a friend of the show. I mean, that just gives us a great deal of honor and pleasure uh, to have you with us, uh, Dr. James Forsyth. So uh, welcome to the show again, Doc. Yeah, thank you, Tom. Yeah. Thank you. You're and, really and you're looking well and you're staying yeah, busy really and awesome. having a great time yeah. taking care of people. That's a wonderful, uh, uh, you know, uh, life to have, isn't it? To be able to use your skills and your knowledge, your creativity to help people with these dreaded diseases that are out there. You know, and there's so much satisfaction in treating patients with uh, advanced cancers and other diseases and seeing them get better and getting cures and actually doing better than the conventional literature uh, with my outcome-based studies. So it's it's not like going to work every day. It's a pleasure to it's just... It's a pleasure. And you see these beautiful be results happening yes. because yeah. of your hard yes. work over all these years. You're 80 years old now, practicing medicine for how long? Since 64. Since 1964. Not only the medical side, but you're Almost also, also an years. HMD, which is homopathic yes. medical doctor. Well, actually, I started off as a pathologist. Oh, I see. Yes, so I remember. So then went to internal medicine, yeah. then to homeopathy, then to integrative oncology. You must be a smart guy. <laughs> I'll ask your wife. She'll tell me the truth, right? <laughs> She'll tell you for sure. Yeah, truth. for sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to get back to you in just a second. We always go to you, Roy, yes. because he tells us why we do the show for 300 times and uh, the pleasure we get from doing it and the commission behind it. So uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us that, you, Roy? You betcha. Well, first of all, we got a nice doctor here. With, yes, we do. He's got a matching blue tie and blue eyes. Yes, we right? are pretty dapper yeah, today, you guys aren't we, Doc? Pretty sharp today. <laughs> yes, you we are. Betcha. Yeah, well, we come here not to look pretty sharp, but to spread the knowledge of the history of Nevada. Right. Of which the United States uh, should be very proud of the state, which they are. To a degree. <laughs> to a degree. Not enough. <laughs> yeah, but enough. if it wasn't for us and uh, Comstock, uh, uh, our debts as a country would have taken us down because mm -hmm. uh, we owed more than what we were worth. Yes, and, uh, at that particular time, uh, Abraham Lincoln uh, declaring this area a state 
really irritated the people in Utah, mm. obviously, since they took it from them. <laughs> That's right. But uh, by and large, I think they forgave him. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, and the Civil War was raging, and that caused Lincoln to yep. uh, hasten the uh, statehood for Nevada, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so... All oh, the Negroes got free? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had a big uh, contribution to that, right? Sure we yeah. did. So yep. we continue to make history. We yep. have oh, uh, yeah. a lot of lot of great characters in our mm -hmm. state, uh, past, present, future, like Dr. Uh, Forsyth with all the good work he's High doing. science orientated. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Tech industry. Mm -hmm. We have Itronic Corporation, Dr. Yep. Whitney, mm -hmm. doing some great things with waste mm -hmm. and turning it into something good. So it goes on and on and on. But you, too, are a, a, a pioneer in many ways. You're up there on the Comstock, and you're finding a lot of things up there that perhaps uh, people didn't know about, but you're working with the University of Nevada right now with that donation you made to them mm -hmm. uh, with the magnetometer. And as early spring comes on, they're going to be up there with their drone and with their professors, and they're going to be scoping that area out and uh, verifying the things that you've already identified up there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which includes what? What's that metal up there that you're so well, high? Well, we found a, a very large deposit of, of platinum. Yeah. And we're going to verify that through the university. What a collaboration yeah, that is, true. huh? And the palladium is really much more valuable. It's more valuable than gold now. It's thirteen hundred eighty-nine dollars. Yeah, what? gold's twelve eighty. Yeah, we'll we'll take that. So one. palladium is uh, platinum's eight oh nine or eight twenty. Yeah, beautiful. So uh, you're working on that, and mm -hmm. then uh, you made a big move from the Comstock down to the Reno Town Mall yep. regarding the store, the Marshallman. Mm -hmm. Tell us what happened there. Well, we set up a beautiful uh, estate jewelry uh, store, but also uh, a store filled with unusual items in the museum category. Yeah. You know, everybody that walks in that store at the mall uh, is so different from an average jewelry store. Because you go to an average jewelry store, what do you see? You see uh, diamonds, right? You see gold, you see silver. Uh, in settings, mm -hmm. and you might see some watches and things like that, but it's pretty standard fare. Mm -hmm. You go into the Marshall Mint and you get historical items, you get one of a kind, estate items, it's things that you'll never find in the average mall jewelry store, right? You right? Yeah, well, you know, um, ancient jewelry is different than modern jewelry, mm -hmm. um, and modern jewelry in some cases is better. Yeah, but in many cases uh, they don't find those stones anymore. That's right. Like that, they're too oh, high grade. In those settings. As yeah. Well. Wow. So uh, uh, those are the kind of find for your wife is ones that are really truly valuable. Yeah. And what's the holiday? What's the, what's coming up in February that pe the men want to start Valent shopping? Valentino. <laughs> Valentino. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so you'd be happy to find uh, a, a nice uh, gift for your honey there. Having the Italian, an Italian wife. Uh, yeah, you want to make Italian your wife relatives. happy. <laughs> make your wife happy over there at the Marshall Mint. Well, go. Doc, let's let's get back to you now. Thank so you. we've had you on, a, on the show a couple of times. Uh, many of our viewers probably know your history, but just give us a brief thumbnail sketch as to uh, where you come from and how you got to Reno and uh, your your uh, work there as a as a a doctor taking care of cancer. Uh, we'll just turn it over to you a few minutes regarding that, but I want to get into all of these books. You're, you're not only a doctor, but you're an author, and you have some, some great topics I want to ask you about there. So okay. tell, first tell us about your history a little bit. Yeah, well, I'm uh, born in uh, 1938, uh, end of the Depression baby, yeah. in Detroit, Michigan, and uh, my dad was a stockbroker. Uh, uh, my mom was uh, supposed to go to nursing school, but because her dad died right at her graduation time of high school, and her mom had a stroke short, shortly thereafter, she had to be the caretaker for her mom, and that curtailed her ambitions to be a nurse. So, uh, and unfortunately, my dad uh, was as a stockbroker did lose a lot of money in the crash in '39. Sure. So, they divor they were divorced when I was two. And uh, I spent a few years in a foster home and then in what was called the German Lutheran home mm. in Detroit where because the name German was attached to the boys' home, 
the kids on the street used to throw rocks over the fence Ooh, and we used to duck rocks. Not good. So I, I had no idea what was going on at the yeah. time. I was just uh, you know, four or five years old. Wow. And um, so it wasn't real pleasant there. But uh, my mom remarried, uh, and then uh, we lived in a nice middle-class neighborhood afterward. Good. Had a nice ending. So uh, <clears throat> basically I went to a, a number of different schools in Detroit and Chicago where the family was... Uh, moving around to and also northern Michigan. Spent my summers on dairy farms with cousins up and learned how to milk cows and bale <laughs> hay and all, all that good stuff. Great. In, uh, and then uh, we moved to California in uh, when I was about 10 and uh, we uh, settled in Hollywood area and uh, I love tennis so I got on the tennis team and <clears throat> went through high school there in the high school that uh, the movie Grease was filmed at. I always say that. Oh, Playing yeah. tennis with Ricky Nelson. Yay, nice. Very so nice. we had a lot of a lot of fun. I got a scholarship to uh, University of California Berkeley. Mm. And it paid for my first year only, but it was great. Uh, and uh, at Berkeley, I was pre med. I I really uh, was enamored by my a friend of mine, Kedrick, whose father was a, a surgeon, cancer surgeon. And he was just a really impressive guy. He carried himself well. He just looked very honorable and nicest personality. So I said, that's what I want to do. Nice. So I, I held on to that belief and became a cancer doctor. So yeah, I think he really impressed me. And I did really was raised by a single parent, so I, I didn't really have a father during yeah. that time. And uh, my minister also was a great influence. Good mentor. Me. Yeah. yeah, good mm -hmm. mentor. So four years in... Uh, at Berkeley in uh, a biochemistry physiology degree and I had a 3.6 average when I uh, got out uh, of Berkeley so I, I was accepted right away across the bay at U University of California San Francisco <clears throat> and uh, I was uh, appointed to be on the teaching staff because of my knowledge of physiology biochemistry so I actually taught my own class as a teaching assistant made a few extra bucks and I also worked as uh, worked my way through school as a lab tech. So I'd be running around San Francisco on my Vespa to Chinese Hospital, St. Mary's Hospital, Amazing. and uh, the Public Health Hospital. And so I was up sometimes three or four hours a night and going to school during the day. So, But I did manage to graduate uh, number 19 in a class of 120. Wonderful. Oh, Congratulations. That is great. So uh, in my senior year, the dean called me and said, uh, you know, we looked at your financial resume and we don't think you're going to make it. Would you like to go into a Ph.D. program? I said, no, let me see what I can do. So I found out about the Army's uh, senior year program where they take care of your your debts and mm -hmm. they make you a second lieutenant, pay you as a second lieutenant. So this is great. So I finally was getting a, a check every day. I had to could quit my other jobs. And uh, after uh, graduating from uh, med school, they put me right away at Letterman Army Hospital, which was about 10 minutes from where I lived <laughs> How in, about that? on Lake Street in San Francisco. And I had a rotating uh, internship there. Then the Vietnam War was breaking out, uh, John. So I said, I really don't even know where this country is. I don't want to really go there. Yeah. But uh, so what uh, What would be a good specialty to go into at that point? So I figured, well, pathology. They don't need pathologists in a place like Vietnam. Yeah. Wrong. I was totally wrong. <laughs> That's exactly what they needed. <laughs> they needed. Yeah. Hey, Doc, we got to take a break. So right. just hold your thought there, and we're going to come back uh, in just a moment. we got to uh, let our sponsors do their thing. Sure. So uh, back with the rest of the story. Plus, uh, talking about all these great books that we have in front of us here, authored by the doctor as well on Old Tales of Nevada, past and present. Everything is handpicked here at Precision Diamonds. All jewelry is handpicked here at Precision Diamonds. Come to Precision Diamonds. I'll fix your jewelry just like new. All of us at Shoe Man's Custom Cycle are ready to get you and your Harley ready for the road. From oil and tire changes to high performance engine upgrades and dyno tuning, we at Shoe Man's have got you covered with experienced factory certified mechanics and a full service machine shop loaded with parts and accessories. Shoe Man's Custom Cycle has been serving Northern Nevada since 1988. So ride on down to Shoe Man's Custom Cycle at 275 East 4th Street in downtown Reno. 
Hi, I'm Paul White. And I'm Dan. We're the producers of the Tanner's Marketplace Antiques and Craft Shows at the Livestock Event Center on Wells Avenue. I'd also like to tell you about our everyday location. We're at Somewhere in Time on South Virginia Street. We're Antique Antiques, booth number 46. You'll find paintings by Nevada artists, collectible glass, vintage jewelry, Native American jewelry and baskets, antiques and unusual to unique items. Find it all at Antique Antiques inside Somewhere in Time at 1313 South Virginia Street. Come, Come see, see us! us. Boutique Elegante's Winter Super Sale is on now. Get 30 to 50% off all winter fashion. Sizes up to 4X. Shop while the selection is great. That and so much more at Boutique Elegante. Lakeside Court in Reno. Hi there, Heroy Marshall here to welcome you to our new world famous Marshall Mint at the Reno Town Mall. You'll find gold and silver bars, the VT Railroad, Wild Mustangs, and Angels of the Day medallions. One of a kind of state jewelry, Morgan Dollars, fashion gold and quartz jewelry, and see the free museum with precious stones and crystals from all over the world. The Marshall Mint, now open in Reno at the Reno Town Mall. We're back here in Old Tales of Nevada, past and present. We have a great guest today, one of our special guests, a good friend of the show, Dr. James Forsyth, very famous worldwide for his work with cancer patients and his uh, very, uh, well, I wouldn't say out of the box, but definitely a new approach to cancer, which many people are picking up on nowadays and, yeah, and have so. are using and has been very successful. And you were kind of a pioneer in doing that. But before we get to all that, uh, just continue your story. You were in Vietnam, went to Vietnam as a pathologist, and tell us the rest of the story and how you got here to Reno. Yeah, I had a couple of close calls in Vietnam. We were rocketed, and uh, the only nurse that died in uh, on active duty was caught shrapnel on her neck and bled out, Ooh. basically, from rocket attacks. Then I went down on a Chinook, rotor blade went out when we were caring for refugees on an island, women and children who had no medical Ooh. care. Ooh. So I, I was lucky when I got back to the United States at Travis Air Force Base, I basically kissed the ground. I, I although, did the same thing in Travis Air Force Base. <laughs> although they said, take off your uniforms when you get off the plane because yeah. they don't like soldiers. Yeah, right. When you went so, took the bus into San Francisco. I, no, there, there was wasn't no a happy time. For, no parade for us. No, absolutely. So anyway, I, I, you know, at that point in my life, I uh, had a couple more months of uh, duty with the Army to pay back. And uh, I decided I didn't want to really be a pathologist all my life. Autopsies, surgicals, uh, specimens. And, and I said, I like people. I like to talk to people. I like to be with people. So I went into an internal medicine residency in uh, San Francisco and uh, got my degree in internal medicine and then went right into a cancer fellowship at my alma mater, UCSF, the Cancer Research Center there. Wonderful and place. at that time, there weren't many oncologists. In fact, I never heard the word oncology once in medical school, John. That's how new it was. <clears throat> but did two years of training there and then went into a private practice in San Francisco for a year and going to six or eight hospitals a day, doing the bridges, uh, again, living in Marin. Uh, I said, I'll probably be dead by 55. <laughs> yeah, they don't like commuting. Said, no, no, what a waste but, of life as yeah, well. Yeah. I'm jealous of my wife having to stay home all day, and I didn't like any of that. No. So anyway, I, we moved to Reno. Uh -huh. And uh, in Reno, uh, became uh, became uh, uh, licensed right away and uh, joined a single man who had a young child had died of leukemia. He was the only guy here practicing cancer. He wasn't really a trained oncologist. He was an internist, but very good at it. Uh -huh. And so then I started the cancer wards at all three hospitals and was in charge of the VA cancer program. Wonderful. Uh, for years, I just did what we call cookbook, Betty Crocker medicine. Mm -hmm. Take the book off the shelf, read the menu, give mm -hmm. it to the patient. Never deviate. And, you know, I said, oh, you know, at five years, I was looking back at my patient. Hmm, mm. Not too good. And I began reading articles in journals showing over 100,000 patients in a retrospective study, John, that had a survival rate of 2%. Mm. Similar study in Australia, just about the same 2% range. Yeah. And I said, I can't do this anymore. I've got to. Because I was seeing patients in Reno because they had naturopathy and homeopathy that were doing better than some of my patients. I said, 
I got to incorporate at this. At least look at it, yeah. And look at it. And so I uh, joined a clinic, the mm -hmm. uh, Century Clinic. Oh, yeah. Run by the Tangs, one of the two preeminent yeah. uh -huh. pre pre homeopaths in northern Nevada. Right. And then got my homeopathic degree and studied for it at the British Institute of Homeopathy. And then started doing outcome based studies. And I've done four since the year 2000. I've done one on pawpaw with Nature Sunshine. That's the tree in southeastern United States that has has a special chemical with it uh -huh. that uh, causes cancer cells to hurry up and die off. Wow, I love that. And then I did poly-MVA. You talk about palladium. You really well, poly-MVA is palladium attached to lipoic acid. And it also causes cancer cells to hurry up and die yeah. and go into apoptosis. Hey, Doc, let me let me ask you a question about yes. it. I'm curious about it. Yes. During your studies with the pathology and within that element uh, within the medical, was there much use of the microscope to look at the uh, bugs, or, or was it more uh, chemical um, killing them that? You guys got me. In other words, they show you what they look like. Well, I, yeah, I, I ran about a dozen labs, even though I, I had been a pathologist and then changed specialties. Mm -hmm. So I used the microscope a lot and looked at my surgical specimens, of course, and looked at blood smears when I did leukemias, lymphomas, myelomas. I always checked them out at the lab because I had expertise in that area. And then when I was in Vietnam, I was diagnosed 20 cases of malaria a day. So wow! I, I knew all about so tropical you, diseases. A lot of that. Tropical yeah. diseases, yeah. yeah. A lot of that. So uh, here you are. Uh, so analysis. you you've 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 pioneered a lot of different uh, elements and in, in, into your uh, therapies, and now it seems like you've uh, you've really uh, been able to hone it down to a certain therapy that works, uh, and it works uh, different from for, for each patient. In other words. There isn't, uh, like you said, a cookie cutter solution oh, to any exactly particular right. patient. You have the ability now to look at the genes mm -hmm. and have them analyzed and put together a regime of cancer fighters. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what they all are, but you, you build no, up oh, that your immune system to the point where... You're, you're actually describing it very well, John. Am I? It's, it's called, gen <laughs> it's called, it's called <laughs> genomic therapy or gene therapy. Yes, gene therapy. There you go. Uh, chemosensitivity test. It's also called precision medicine, yeah. liquid biopsy, tailor-made medicine. There's about 10 names to it. Yeah. But what it is, and thanks to the completion of the human genome in 2003, 2003 that's, uh, what, what is it now? It's 16 years ago yeah. almost, my right. God. Um, th we can tell four things now from patient's blood. So if I t you came in with the, some cancer and I took your blood, John, we send it off to one of the three top labs in the world. We've used all three. We've used the one in South Korea, mm -hmm. the one in Germany, and the one in Greece. And mm. the one in Greece is the best. And I know their economy is a bit shaky, yeah. but they are good. They're uh -huh. very good. They're way ahead of the curve on genetics. So we learn these four things from every patient. The best chemo drugs, and some of these go way back to the mid-60s, because then, before then there was a handful, yeah. a handful of drugs only. Yeah. Then the best targeted agents, which remember, no chemo drug has been developed in the last 10 years, so everything's shifting toward immunotherapy. Mm -hmm. Here's what targeted therapy is. There are receptors on cancer cells, many receptors, and a targeted therapy hooks onto a receptor, then immobilizes or kills the cancer cell. Mm -hmm. So it's an an antibody-antigen reaction. That's why they call it immunotherapy, John. Okay, I see. So, But these are newer drugs. They're very very pricey. Very, yeah. In fact, sometimes six to 8000 for a single bag of chemo. Oh. Now you have to be Jeff Bezos. Yeah. Or you have to be Uri Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or you have to, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, so it's who not really afford, available can, to the average who can Joe. Who afford that? And yeah, who can? Yeah. Even if insurance covers 80%, that still leaves a big bill. Yeah. And patients run out of money quickly. Yes, they do. Yeah. So, so you're giving this every two or three weeks, IV? Yeah. For things like COVID colon cancer, for lung cancer, for ovarian cancer, for brain wow. cancer. So it's tough. It's, it's, it's too much. The other thing you learn, though, which conventional guys and my, my colleagues, I'm sorry to say, still don't buy into the, the supplements, the vitamins, minerals, and herbs that all come up on the Greek test as having 
some activity and it's a lower level, John. It may only be 5, 10, but all the way up to 60% activity. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about things like curcumin or turmeric, like quercetin, yeah. like uh, algae products, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. mushroom products. Yeah, I've heard that. And yeah. then some vitamins like yeah. AEC, coenzyme Q10, resveratrol. Sure. Things that the conventional guys just totally discount. And diet. Yeah, well I think that's so cool that you're able to uh, take an individual, find out what's going to work for that person and that particular uh, cancer and attack it with these various You know what I tell of... them, John? I say, I'm not guessing anymore. I'm yeah. Your genes are telling me what yeah, to do. Yeah, that's the point. I, I'm not guessing at all. I yeah. made my job much easier, frankly. Yeah. And your genes, if you had prostate cancer, your genes as a prostate patient would be different than any other prostate cancer patient that walks in because your genes are different. Gene, everybody' genes are different. So yeah. you, it, it's very precise medicine, and it it hits a lot of home runs. Let me ask you a question about some of these new therapies that have. Uh, in fact, my sister is involved. She said yeah. uh, four or five years she was a, a stage four melanoma. Yes. And it appears in different parts of her oh, body. Yes. At, you know, so now they are injecting her. Uh, with a virus, okay, mm -hmm. say it's a shingle virus or mm -hmm. it might be the polio virus and they put it right there on the cancer cells and what it is supposed to do, and I guess it does, is that it awakens the uh, immune system that mm -hmm. that cancer uh, needs to be attacked, that cell needs to be attacked. Sure. So the immune system goes after that cell and destroys it. Is that something that you incorporated? We've done it since the 70s. In fact, they used to use the BCG virus, which is the tuberculosis virus, uh. which is mandatory in Canada. Every little kid has to get a TB virus. Yeah. But they've used it with carini bacteria, which is the diphtheria uh, bacteria. Mm. Now they're using more viruses rather than bacteria. Those two were viruses. Yeah. Well, we used to inject those and get an immune response, so the immune system was really handling the melanoma. 50% yeah. of melanomas end up in the brain. Oh, yeah, and then yeah. what's what's the uh, prognosis as far as their ability to live? It's, it's not very long. In the old days, you'd be gone Jimmy in six Car months. Jimmy Carter is amazing. He yeah. he shouldn't be here, but yeah, with the new right. drugs, he's made it through yeah. uh, two or three years now. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. So and my sister goes to the same doctor that... Carter. Jimmy Carter went to. Well, that's amazing. Yeah, but they have resources, so they can do that. You but know? you're right, and when you say now that we have this information, it's like giving you a blueprint or a roadmap, which you didn't have before. Exactly. It's giving us the ability to use lower-dose chemo, which I do, which we called IPT, insulin potentiated low-dose therapy, which is actually homeopathy. Mm. Remember, if you take a standard dose, John, and you bring it down 90%, when you're in the 10% range on any drug, it's homeopathy. Oh, neat. And okay. homeopathy is what immunizations, vaccines, and allergy testing is all about. All right, listen, let's take another break here. Great stuff. I love it. Uh, we're going to get to these books on, uh, on that one. Okay. All right. So we'll be right back after this on Old Tales in Nevada, past and present. Hey everyone, Dave Asher here introducing you to our new store, the Nevada Marketplace in the Reno Town Mall. Anchored with the Buy Nevada First gift shop, we've added over 60 micro shops, giving locals a place to set up their dream store. We are now 20,000 square feet strong, supporting over 250 local merchants with all things made in Nevada and more. We have more locals in one place than anywhere in the state, ready to help you find that perfect gift. We're open every day with easy parking at Peckham and Virginia. Go to buynevadafirst.com, your source for all things local. Boutique Elegante's Winter Super Sale is on now. Get 30 to 50% off all winter fashion. Sizes up to 4X. Shop while the selection is great. That and so much more at Boutique Elegante. Lakeside Court in Reno. Boutique Elegante's Winter Super Sale is on now. Get 30 to 50% off all winter fashion. Sizes up to 4X. Shop while the selection is great. That and so much more at Boutique Elegante. Lakeside Court in Reno. All of us at Shoe Man's Custom Cycle are ready to get you and your Harley ready for the road. From oil and tire changes to high performance engine upgrades and dyno tuning, we at Shoe Man's have got you covered with experienced factory certified mechanics and a full service machine shop loaded with parts and accessories. 
Shoe Man's Custom Cycle has been serving Northern Nevada since 1988. So ride on down to Shoe Man's Custom Cycle at 275 East 4th Street in downtown Reno. Shoe Man's Custom Cycle, we're the biker's bike shop. Somewhere in Time is the place to find what will be treasured for all time. Vintage and antique furniture, glassware, toys, tools, neon, home decor, unusual collections throughout the store at Somewhere in Time in Reno. Deluxe Travel, locally owned and operating since 1991, is the home for travel to Mexico and Central and South America. The crew at Deluxe Travel is bilingual, trustworthy, thorough, and caring. They will do everything possible to make your dream vacation the best it can be. Now is the time to book for winter travel, so stop by the office at 100 California Avenue or call 686-7000. You can also check us out on our website at deluxetravelltd.com. At Deluxe Travel, we sell dreams. Come in and plan yours. We're back here for our third segment on Old Tales of Nevada, past and present. Just to remind everybody who we are, I'm John O'Brien, the host of the show, our executive producer, Uroy Marshall, and our special guest for our special edition today, Dr. James Forsyth. And as you've heard from a past couple of segments here, uh, he's, he's done a lot, a lot of hard work to help people with these uh, different forms of cancer, and he's had some great results. And in fact, uh, globally, we're seeing some advancements in cancer that give people a tremendous amount of hope. I always figure if I can hang around long enough, cancer won't be a, won't be a problem. We'll worry, right. worry about something else. But anyway, great to have you on the show, Doc. And uh, we, we've talked a lot about cancer but and your work as a doctor. But in association with that, uh, you're all, well, I don't know where you get the time to do all this, you know. But uh, you're also a prolific author. And how many books have you... Uh, Awesome. 24 now, and I'm 24. working on uh, 24 25 is uh, Essential Oils in the Treatment of Cancer, John. Super. Oh, and right. how long does it take you to write a book? Is it, do you have a standard... Uh, oh, three to four, sometimes six months. It depends. Really? Yeah. No kidding. That's a lot of work. Now, you're working how many hours a day? I, I put it at about uh, 24, 28 hours a week. A week? Yeah. Yeah. At my, my clinic. Oh, so okay. Starting at 6 a.m. And, and so you must have... Uh, Proteges out there, assistants yes. that help you with, uh, with all the clients, because you have clients that come from all over the world, and you have to take care of them when they show they up, do. right? They come from. Uh, and I I would never go as far as some of these patients from Jakarta, Indonesia, oh, and yeah. Hong Kong. Well, they're desperate, you and know. Western Australia. In fact, I had a couple from Western Australia that came to me, and then his father, the man's father, got sick. He had to go home and take care of him. Wow. Then came back, so they made two 17,000-mile trips <laughs> back and forth. Yeah, amazing, amazing. That's a good long trip off And as you can see, uh, everybody, uh, a lot of different subjects here. This one is uh, an anti-cancer uh, diet, okay, and uh, uh, anti Aging Cures. Um, we have Su Suzanne Summer. This is your big one right here, huh? She's this my is, the knock is this a knockout diet or something like that? It's, it's not only diet. It's She uh, She beat her own breast cancer 14 oh. years ago, yeah. did not take chemo, and uh, she got together the doctors all over the country. I was very fortunate to get named by her because she saw my work. And, and the only doctor in Nevada, and uh, there's only one other doctor in California that's in the book, but uh, it's a real honor. We've gotten thousands of patients because of that book, and worldwide distribution. Wonderful. It's even was the best seller in Korea and China. No kidding, yeah. wow, that's Fantastic. great. Now, this one kind of intrigues me because marijuana is uh, in the news a lot. Yes a lot in the last couple of years. Nevada just passed a law to make it uh, available for recreational use and a lot of controversy as to whether it should be used, how it should be used, can it be used, uh, what are the health benefits, if at all, because some people use it that way. Yes. Uh, and you actually use it in, in your therapies uh, for cancer of different kinds and you wrote a book about it. And is this a, a scientific book, 
or is it a uh, a book that the average Joe can uh, learn from? It's meant for the layperson, John, and it is uh, some. There's science in it. We have studies in it. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about the history of uh, marijuana, because yeah. in the '60s, in the summer of love, you remember <laughs> that's the, right. Yeah. It was all You're right in the middle of it, weren't getting you? high, and my apartment was just a couple of blocks from. Uh, hate Ashbury, and I saw it all, believe me. Wow. Uh, I, and of course, at that time, it was just THC and, and, and mescaline, peyote, psilocybin, marijuana, and there really wasn't much coke, there wasn't any crack then, there wasn't any fentanyl, <laughs> yeah. and there was no heroin. Oh. Uh, but uh, my friend in my class, David Smith, started the Hate Ashbury Free Clinic, and I helped him out there. Free, we were all donating our time to it, of course. But uh, he is now head of addiction medicine in the United States, David oh, Smith. Right. So he's quite an uh, important figure. Yeah. But uh, so in the 70s, the Israeli scientists, mm -hmm. doctors and PhDs in biochemistry, etc., got a hold of the marijuana plant. They took it apart. Basically, they found 450 chemicals in the marijuana plant. Really? Two of them have effect in cancer. Two of them. THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, hard word, but just remember THC, uh -huh. and CBD, cannabidiol. Okay. They have to join hands. They're called entourage or dual effect. They work together, and they tack the cancer cell together, and one alone won't do it. Uh -huh. THC won't do it, CBD. Now, CBD alone can help sleep, pain, nausea, and appetite, mm -hmm. but the two together hit cancer. No kidding. And oh. they interrupt the mitochondrial oxidative processes. They cause a waxy substance to be formed in the cancer cell and the cancer cells do die off. We think it's going to be most useful, John, as a maintenance agent when you get a patient in a remission, even if it's a partial remission, mm -hmm. you want to keep them there. You don't want to have the cancer relapse because these, these cancer cells are smart fellas. They know how to <laughs> mutate and make life miserable for all of us. Isn't that amazing? Now, is this well-accepted uh, therapy? Uh, uh, did you pioneer it yourself? Or I have one of the first studies in the United States. In fact, I worked with uh, Finlay uh, out of uh, Richmond, California, PhD in, uh, in biochemistry, and she had the uh, uh, four-to-one ratio, which is THC four parts, mm -hmm. CBD one. And she's not a doctor, uh -huh. but she is a PhD in, in biochemistry. Uh -huh. So we, I kept feeding her patients for maintenance, and she would treat them, but she's quite pricey. I'm not going to go into all that, but yeah. she would give them three months supply uh -huh. to put on their gums uh -huh. uh, once a night, and then eventually once a day. Once they became acclimatized, then they could do it twice a day, every 12 hours. Mm. Of course giving them advice not to drink, uh, not to smoke, drink, and uh, use other drugs with it, obviously, and not to drive, obviously, uh -huh. and not to do dangerous activities. And it actually works. It, it works. actually works. We've seen uh, prostate cancer, breast cancer, lung cancer even uh, go into complete remission as maintenance and stay there. In fact, I just Now, is it universal, Doc, or is it one of these things that will work for you, maybe work for it you right now? It doesn't work for none me. of these things is 100%. Yeah, just. so the, the genes tell you that... They don't test this in the genetic. They do test frankincense the essential oil. They don't test cannabis yet. Uh, I'm, we've looked for it. We're hoping they will start testing it yeah. in the chemosensitivity department. Uh, okay, okay. So so there's a lot of work to be done. But uh, we had 29 patients we, we studied, and all of them in Stanford reviewed our data, and they said all of them had prolonged survivals. Okay, when you say prolonged, how, how, how far? Well, even brain cancer, you, you recognize Bo Biden and Teddy Kennedy lasted less, less than a year to 18 months. Right, it's terrible. Our ca uh, brain cancers are lasting five to seven years. Or more. Really? And they're viable? They're uh, able to function yes. oh, as, yes. uh, uh, you know, contribute? Uh, Absolutely. Have a, have a decent uh, quality of life, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Anytime you've got your... <laughs> Your brain intact, you're going to have high quality. <laughs> right. uh, here's that one I'm very interested in, yeah. anti-aging. How about that? Let me ask him one more question now. Uh, doctor, is the uh, aspect of, of the THC and the CBD cause the cancer to starve to death? Or does it cause the cancer to die of some type? Of it, it dies. It, it, its mitochondrial apparatus is destroyed. 
and there's uh, and the oxidative processes within the cancer cell are destroyed, and so the cell like a bug killer is then eaten up by the it just like right. burns right. up. Or right. I saw something on it's TV carried away, and then they it's excreted through your bile system into wow. the colon. Oh, okay, well that must be exciting to see. Yeah. You know, when, when it happens. Uh, so here's one that we all should be interested in, right? <laughs> Anti-aging, sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Anti-aging cures. Now, <laughs> what, could, what could possibly uh, roll back aging, uh, Doc? Uh, yeah, I mean, you're in well, great shape for 80 years old, <laughs> you know? And I, and I do follow the book. I think you write follows it uh, in great uh, I may be speaking out of turn you right but I know you you've dabbled in this as well but uh, we, we know that uh, human growth hormone which remember in the 60s and 70s and the 1900s it was used just mainly to to make short kids taller <laughs> and the source of all HGH at that time was cadavers, cadaver pituitary, oh. your master gland, which lays about an inch behind the center of your eyebrows oh, well. in a cavity called the cella tursica. Mm -hmm. It's got a, it shields it because it's about the size of a large kidney bean. <laughs> and it secretes, it's the master hormone. It's the leader of the orchestra. Just think of, because it leads, it controls your thyroid, your adrenals, your sex hormones. Mm plus your anti-diuretic hormones and other things as well. So we want to make sure that's in good shape. Yeah. So, but, but the FDA, in its great wisdom, would allow you to replace any hormone deficiency. However, not, H, not HGH. Huh. They were afraid of it being huh. used for athletic enhancement in high school, huh. college, and professional kids. Mm -hmm. And they had, so they, they outlawed its use. Mm -hmm. Well, there was an underground movement called the anti-aging group, American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine uh -huh. that started using, there's about 20 or 30,000 docs that use it regularly. Okay. On their patients and on themselves. All right. I took it for years. Um, yeah. Uh, I was always under the assumption that it came from the red deer antler from Africa and Australia. Red velvet. Yeah, the red, the deer, red velvet part that's of the, the synthetic. antler. Um, now that's the IGF-1 that you're talking about and it, it, they scrape it off the antlers. The, the uh, velvet on the antlers, velvet oh, deer antler, really? and that gives IGF one. But uh, the the uh, actually, let's go into the story a little further. In the mid '80s, John, uh, when they stopped using the pituitary cadaver HGH, it was causing uh, Jakob Crutzfeld disease, which is a dementia. Ooh. It was being transferred through that. Medicine. So they stopped using. Right about the same time, bioengineering developed the long chain 192 amino acid polypeptide, which is the HGH molecule. So it was the identical molecule that your own H a pituitary produces. So it was it was like serendipity. Yeah. They had the product now. Wow. So since then, we've all used the product. Synthetic. It's and, synthetic. and ten different pharmaceuticals make it. Wonderful. So l listen, we have to. We have to close this uh, segment out, but uh, you can get this at most bookstores, I suppose, right? Yeah, yeah. or on the uh, Old Town Mall. The, uh, oh, at the Reno Town Mall, Old yeah. Old Town Mall, over, yes. over at the radio station. Or in there. my office, yeah. It, there you go. And it's on Amazon. Amazon, e all that. Yeah, okay, very good. Well, I might take that home myself. There you I go. better yeah. by next week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen, now, we'll be back with our last segment with Dr. Forsyth right after we hear from a couple of our good sponsors on Old Tales in Nevada, past and present. Hey everyone, Dave Asher here introducing you to our new store, the Nevada Marketplace in the Reno Town Mall. Anchored with the Buy Nevada First gift shop, we've added over 60 micro shops, giving locals a place to set up their dream store. We are now 20,000 square feet strong, supporting over 250 local merchants with all things made in Nevada and more. We have more locals in one place than anywhere in the state, ready to help you find that perfect gift. We're open every day with easy parking at Peckham and Virginia. Go to buynevadafirst.com, your source for all things local. Boutique Elegante's Winter Super Sale is on now. Get 30 to 50% off all winter fashions. Sizes up to 4X. Shop while the selection is great. That and so much more at Boutique Elegante. Lakeside Court in Reno. Everything is handpicked here at Precision Diamonds. All jewelry is handpicked here at Precision Diamonds. Come to Precision Diamonds. I'll fix your jewelry just like new. 
Hi there, Heroy Marshall here to welcome you to our new world famous Marshall Mint at the Reno Town Mall. You'll find gold and silver bars, the VNT Railroad, wild Mustangs, and Angels of the Day medallions, one of a kind of state jewelry, Morgan Dollars, fashion golden quartz jewelry, and see the free museum with precious stones and crystals from all over the world. The Marshall Mint, now open in Reno at the Reno Town Mall. All of us at Shoe Man's Custom Cycle are ready to get you and your Harley ready for the road. From oil and tire changes to high performance engine upgrades and dyno tuning, we at Shoe Man's have got you covered with experienced factory certified mechanics and a full service machine shop loaded with parts and accessories. Shoe Man's Custom Cycle has been serving Northern Nevada since 1988. So ride on down to Shoe Man's Custom Cycle at 275 East 4th Street in downtown Reno. Shoe Man's Custom Cycle, we're the bikers bike shop. Somewhere in Time is the place to find what will be treasured for all time. Vintage and antique furniture, glassware, toys, tools, neon, home decor, unusual collections throughout the store at Somewhere in Time in Reno. Boutique Elegante's Winter Super Sale is on now. Get 30 to 50% off all winter fashion. Sizes up to 4X. Shop while the selection is great. That and so much more at Boutique Elegante. Lakeside Court in Reno. Come to Precision Diamonds. I'll fix your jewelry just like new. Deluxe Travel, locally owned and operating since 1991, is the home for travel to Mexico and Central and South America. The crew at Deluxe Travel is bilingual, trustworthy, thorough, and caring. They will do everything possible to make your dream vacation the best it can be. Now is the time to book for winter travel, so stop by the office at 100 California Avenue or call 686-7000. You can also check us out on our website at deluxetravelltd.com. At Deluxe Travel, we sell dreams. Come in and plan yours. Boutique Elegante's Winter Super Sale is on now. Get 30 to 50% off all winter fashion. Sizes up to 4X. Shop while the selection is great. That and so much more at Boutique Elegante. Lakeside Court in Reno. We're back here for our last segment of Old Tales in Nevada, our special edition as we count down to our 300th show, and we have a great guest with us today, world-renowned, Dr. James Forsyth. Uh, great, great work with cancer and uh, really helping people with quality of life and surviving and coping with that terrible disease called cancer. But also, as we have been discussing the last couple of our uh, segments here, also a prolific author, 24 books. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you were telling us about this one, that uh, anti-aging, this HGH, which is... Uh, Stands for what again? Human growth hormone. Human growth you hormone. You uh, wrote the protocol yeah, the, on how to administer that, right? It, interestingly enough, when I was battling the FDA about its usage, they came to my attorneys and said, we think Dr. Forsythe knows a lot about this subject. Please write the protocol, which I did in a couple months. They accepted it. It was approved by the FDA and the, and the court. So the Use National worldwide. Protocol is under my name. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Yeah. yeah. No matter when, when they talk about it, you, you are associated with it. <laughs> yes. How about that? That's beautiful. Yeah. You have so many people in Nevada that have that kind of reputation worldwide, you know, because of their uh, good work. Uh, here's another book that gives me and probably a lot of people a lot of curiosity, Natural Painkillers and How to Relieve Pain. I, we all have pain, uh, uh, some uh, temporarily and some chronic, mm -hmm. and I feel for the people that have that chronic pain, it never goes away. Uh, and they're all looking for solutions. I hear about it all the time, as you do probably you, right, huh? Mm -hmm. And you as a doctor, definitely. So uh, what what does this book tell us that is going well, to be Well, I, I go into the history of painkillers. Uh, we, we start, remember, in the great wars of the Indian Wars and the Revolutionary War and the Napoleonic Wars, nothing for pain. Really, there was nothing there. Even in the Civil War, the oh. only thing they had was chloroform, which is an anesthetic. And if you gave too much, you got sudden sniffers disease, which is cardiac arrhythmias and sudden death. Uh, so yeah. uh, that uh. fell out of favor. And then Ether, you saw the yeah. uh, Cider House rules where he, the director, doctor was uh, addicted to ether. Yeah. And he was stiff every night. Yeah. And then it wasn't until the 1890s that bare aspirin came about from the white willow bark. Right. They synthesized acetyl 
a salicylic acid. Uh -huh. And that was really the beginning of big pharma. Mm. And since the 1890s till present, and even more so now, because it's all over TV and everything. Yeah. And those were the drugs. That was a pill cures everything. Forget about natural medicine. It's not that great. Uh, during the 1800s, it was all homeopathy and naturopathy, natural thing. Mm -hmm. And then the Flexner Report, fi financed by the Rockefellers and Carnegies, went around to all the medical schools, changed their curricula. Everything was going to be based on what Big Pharma could produce. Mm. And that's the way it is. Now. That's the way it is. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're encouraging natural painkillers. Yes. So if I have a chronic back injury that mm. creates pain, what can a person take in order to alleviate that's a good that question john so we start on a pain ladder so you don't you never start at the top which is morphine and heroin is not available to anyone right but if you start at the bottom you're thinking about things like aspirin okay. or NSAIDs, which are Aleve and motrin they're good and then you work up to something uh, like Toradol, which is an NSAID also, but has more pain control. Mm -hmm. And then you're then you're into the opiates. opiates. Then you're into hydrocodone, and then you're going into Percocet, yeah. and then Demerol, right. and then Dilaudid, and then fentanyl, and then right at the top of the ladder is morphine. Yeah, and that's what's killing people today. Yes. Accidental and, overdoses. Well, people are getting it through China, from China and through Mexico, the fentanyl, and they're over, they don't know how to use it, and they're because the fentanyl patch, which is a 72-hour patch, uh -huh. is pretty safe if you use it carefully. But they're, uh -huh. they're shooting it up and they're doing okay. things with it they shouldn't be doing. Okay. So you're saying start with the, the lowest level. Yeah, you and work, work up, up the up, ladder. Up the and ladder. then when you wean them off, you have to go down the ladder as well. Down the ladder. Okay. Yeah. But a person who's got a back pain, a chronic back pain, yeah. uh, is aspirin going to... You don't want to take too much aspirin or Tylenol. It, it affects the kidney and bleeding. Yeah. And it also affects your liver yeah. enzymes. So you want to stay away from those, and especially in high doses. Uh -huh. Occasional uh -huh. uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories are all right okay. for a while for, you know, dental pain and yeah. fractures and things, but you don't want to stay up too long. In yeah. fact, they've, they've made doctors now only give like three to five days supply, uh -huh. and then you're supposed to turn in your extra narcotic, which no one is doing. It's ridiculous, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I, I, I see why they're doing it, because yeah. we're losing so many people. You said yeah. earlier, was it 70,000 people are dying from, uh, from these exactly. opioids, accidental overdose or on purpose? More than were killed in the Vietnam per year. Yeah, so that's absolutely crazy. Yeah. So I understand the need to be careful in how it's administered, but there are people out there who need uh, painkillers and they use it in a responsible way. But with all these different regulations, it makes it very difficult it's to very have hard, it. Especially cancer patients. They used to leave oncologists completely alone. Now they're requiring us yeah. to yeah. do yeah. the regular. Now, program. is there any topical thing? You know, you, you see all this stuff on TV, the immu uh, oil, uh, you put it on oil, there. Yes. Yeah. Things like that. Uh, is that CBD worth a while? Oil, the oil, CBD oils are for pain. They can help mild pain. Uh -huh. uh, the lidocaine patches are helpful. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, salon paws. Salon paws. Things like that are helpful. They actually work. They help a little. They're yeah. not, not very strong. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, one thing that I take that works What's good that? for me is uh, turmeric. Turmeric, yes, that's a good thing. That's anti-inflammatory. Yeah, what is that again? What is it? It's a yellow-looking. It used to come in curry. Oh, They make mustard seed out of it. Oh, okay. Oh, they did, huh? Wow. Turmeric is very good. It definitely will help in a non-habit forming, and it doesn't give you stomach cancer. So besides taking the, you know, the aspirins and the opioids and things like that, is there any other natural way to, you know, well, there's acupuncture, you know, there's yeah. uh, mind-body interaction, biofeedback. Yeah, there's Wild nothing. turkey, wild turkey. <laughs> I was thinking about that myself. <laughs> you got that right. Yeah, but there's nothing you can do as a doctor to go in there and, like you do with cancer, for example, looking at the genes, looking at whatever, and saying, okay, Not if yet. I do this, I can... But on hospice care, they start the morphine drip, and then they, the hospice used to last three to six months. Now, if you're in the hospital, it's two to three days because the nurse every couple hours is turning up the morphine and then shooting in Adafan every four to six hours, which is a tranquilizer. Wow. And the, it, what it does is 
depresses the respiration, so the patient eventually isn't breathing in the uh, ooh, cardiac that's, arrest. That's not, a fun, not good. That's not even fun so, to think about. Yeah, it's called the death panel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why it's good to have a medical directive. Yes. If you go into the hospital, don't leave things to chance, right? No. Yeah. No, because uh, they, they're they're encouraged to actually put people out of their misery. Yeah, get it over It's with. like Dr. Kevorkian in slow motion. Yeah, right. yeah. All right, so <laughs> let me going. ask you this. Okay, you have all these books. You probably got one in the works uh, as, as we speak. But uh, just going back to uh, the matter of cancer, as we uh, sum up uh, the show here, appreciate all your information. Uh, what, what's the next big evolution to cancer treatment? Did, are you well, uh, we, I involved feel, in that? Yeah, I feel that uh, low-dose non-toxic chemotherapy, we, we don't need to use full-dose toxic chemo anymore. They haven't quite got the message, but Big Pharma really doesn't want them because they're going to lose 90% of their profits. Mm. But low-dose works equally well without all the toxicities like hair loss, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, chemo yeah. brain, sure. organ damage, cytopenias, neuropathies. Yeah. With one cycle of full-dose chemo, you can have all those, any or all of those, John. Even death can occur, but the oncologist walks away. He's done everything <laughs> yeah, by he? the cookbook. Yeah. He hasn't missed a, a one step in the menu, Yeah. and he has no liability. Yeah, yeah. Well, isn't that the secret of all the cancer treatments is dosage, right? Yes. Uh, whether it's what you just mentioned or the viruses they put into people, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of treatment. It, it's a matter of figuring out what dose do I give? Because I've heard where people have had brain cancer, they put the polio virus in there, it works uh, at a certain dose for one person, and then the next person, they put the same dose in there, and it kills them. See? Well, in our protocol, we give three days of immune therapy and two days per week of the low-dose insulin potential. And that's very important. We didn't really mention there's insulin in every bag. What that does is it fools the cancer cell into thinking they're getting a sugar meal instead they're getting low-dose chemo because cancer cells are endowed, and this was discovered way back in the early 30s, that they're endowed with many more insulin receptors because they can only utilize sugar, simple sugars, and high glycemic foods, John. Amazing, amazing. So, the conventional guys still haven't quite Bad got for you. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, hopefully you're writing all this stuff down somewhere, you know. So <laughs> right here is one place. But I mean, do you uh, are, are you looked at uh, as far as uh, publishing in medical journals? The yeah, American I, I, what is that big one over there in the East Coast? American American Medical Association. Med yeah. JAMA. Yeah. Do you do much for them the at all? Journal of Medicine. Do they accept the homopathic they, they, with the medical now? They more? really are not that interested in it. They really? They, they would rather have something from Big Pharma. Wow. So that's, yeah. It's, uh, but you just have to keep swimming upstream. Yeah, well, anybody uh, who has made big medical leaps and discoveries, it seems they have to be mavericks. They, you know, the, the, the fella that did the polio vaccine, ma uh, vaccine. Salk. Yeah, he wasn't well accepted by the medical oh. community. And so we got, what, about 30 seconds there? And Jenner mm -hmm. was run out of town because they thought he was a pedophile <laughs> yeah. because of his vaccinations. Yeah. How much time do we have left, uh, guys? About Just, 40 seconds. Oh, about 40 seconds. Well, we, we definitely want to take the time to thank you, Doc, for yeah, coming over and yeah. uh, getting there. away from the practice for a few <laughs> minutes to uh, inform us and, and to support us. And uh, we really appreciate you being part of the show all sure. these years and, and helping us do it right. So uh, thank, thank you so you. much. And uh, you, Roy, thank you for bringing the show uh, to TV you, and paying for it sure. all these years. We appreciate that. And, and you, most want, of you want your phone number on, on, on this? We'll, we'll, we'll have it on screen for him. Yeah, okay. yeah. But we want to thank our audience as well uh, for being with us all these years, too. It's going on sure. nine years. So uh, for now and for all of us, we want to wish you, you a great betcha. Nevada day. And we'll see you next week on Old Tales of Nevada, past and present. Thank you.